Well, hello, I'm Patty. I'm Tommy. We are Alderman Farms. Uh, this video has been in the making for a while, and we actually uh, were waiting to finish it, but we need to give you a little uh, backstory before the video starts. Um, a lot of you may know that Tommy was um, trying to put a pig up or getting the gate uh, fastened, and he got poked with one of the pig's tusks. Yeah, I got gored on yeah. my, my right shin, just below my right knee, and it felt like getting hit with a ball peen hammer. And this video is actually gonna pick up the day after that happened. So when that happened, um, uh, he, Carly Ann was home with him and she brought him to the hospital because it was a very deep wound. He knew that he needed medical treatment. So she brought him to the hospital and they stitched him up. Um, and they did all kind of x-rays, cat scan, you know, everything. Checked it out really good. They stitched it up very loosely because um, they said that it needed to heal from the inside out. Well, so it, well, at that point in time, they stitched it up loosely because they wanted it to drain. They wanted it to keep draining. Correct. And it would heal from the inside out and not seal up the top layer and then, you know, the infection or something be down there. They also, did they give you IV antibiotic that day? Yes. I think, yeah, they did. And so, and then he came home on antibiotics too, I believe. Yes. So that was day one that happened on Sunday. So this video is going to actually pick up on day two at the surgeon's office. Uh, we, uh, our doctor wanted him to go and let the surgeon check it out. Uh, yeah, because, oh, because, because it kept it, bleeding. Right, it kept bleeding. Yeah. It kept bleeding and bleeding. Not, not just draining, I mean bleeding. Yeah, he had a little pain. bleeder and stuff. Yeah, so. so. Um, anyway, I, and I wasn't real good about saying what day we were on uh, with the video, but uh, they, uh, throughout the video in different places, I do tell you what day it is. So, anyway, here is the video of what I call the pig poke. Okay, we're at the surgeon's office now, and his assistant, or is a nurse practitioner? Nurse practitioner, I think. For our surgeon. Anyway, he's come in, and he has really oh, um, my gosh. cleaned like, his bubbo up and poked and prodded. And like, hey, let's see what happens if I push on it as hard as I can. <laughs> That's not true. Ugh. Anyway, um, it's because, you know, I it keeps... vomit. It keeps bleeding and all, so... He thinks maybe it's like just right on the edge a where skin bleeder. Yeah, I think it's skin vessel. Yeah, capillary. Yeah, capillary. Anyway, so he's gonna uh, take the stitches out. He's gonna numb it first. So Tommy was really excited. He's gonna yeah, numb it so again. You, you had me at deadening. <laughs> so he's gonna numb it and he's gonna take, take a the propane torch. Tommy, don't quit talking because he's taking oxycodone. Yeah, I got oxycodone and it makes me talkative. He's very talkative. He's telling his life story to everybody he sees. Oh, gosh. But anyway, um, so they're going to take the stitches out, and he's going to... Uh, cauterize. Cauterize it. Yeah, he's going to burn it and make it quit bleeding if it's right there on the that surface. That sounds like so much fun. <laughs> anyway, I can hardly wait. Anyway, so they're going to uh, do that, and so hopefully they'll make it quit bleeding, and he'll be a little happier, right? Yeah, maybe I'll be able to sleep in the bed instead of... I did watch recliner. almost all of season three of 24. I think I watched 10 episodes of season three and one episode of season 11, uh, season four overnight. Well, it's 10 o'clock on Monday night. And this isn't where we really wanted to be. But here we are. There he is. Yes, we are in a hospital room. Tommy spiked a fever, over 101. So we decided we better come on to the hospital to see what's going on. And as we were preparing to go, he decides he wants to take a nap while he's standing up or huh. sitting straight up in a chair. Yeah, I felt like I was gonna go, so I told Patty, didn't I tell you I need to sit? Yeah, and you told me you felt like he was gonna uh, pass out. Yeah, so, and then, and, and apparently I did a couple times sitting up in that chair. She told me my eyes were wa rolling back and- He was twitching. I remember her calling my name. I remember the sensation of like not being able to hear her and then being able to hear her. So I was out and uh, she called me back. <laughs> I was nauseous. Oh, that was awful. Uh, I feel way better. Still in an awful lot of pain. Awful lot of pain. 
Uh, the pain's gotten worse after it went to see the surgeon, but uh, of course we thought, you know, that might happen, but it's just really intense. Really intense. He, of course, he, he worked me over, you know. He, uh, he had to poke around in there and find the bleeder, which is a little capillary yeah. in the epidermis that was bleeding. He cauterized it three times and then sewed it up tight. And uh, and he poked and prodded, you know, and he took real good care of me. But he had to he had to push hard, and I got a bruised bone, y'all. And man, it, you know, so uh, I'm I'm hurting, I'm hurting. Not as bad right now as I have been. Like I said, I was heading to the door, and when he got real woozy and everything, and so we called the ambulance, and so he had him a little ride tonight. Uh, a bouncy ride, which oh. was totally unpleasant. He said a very bouncy ride that was very unpleasant. <clears throat> hurt, you know, hurt because of the pain. Because of his leg. Paramedics were great. Yeah, paramedics, they're, they're wonderful. But anyway, so uh, we're, we're waiting. Uh, we haven't seen anybody yet, so I'm sure they're going to be running some blood tests and stuff to see what's going on. So anyway, we'll keep you posted. Well, the doctor has come in, and he says the stitches need to come out. So let's see, we got stitches yesterday, loose stitches. Then we got tighter stitches today. Now we're taking stitches out tonight. So we hope this, it does hurt a lot worse with it stitched up so tight. So we're hoping that this will help. Um, also we're gonna do, they've done an EKG and I feel sure that was fine. The doctor didn't say anything about it. And they're gonna do uh, his blood count and IV antibiotics and fluids and take the stitches out. Is that all? I think so. Still don't know why he, did, why he almost passed out, but did or did pass, pass out. out. So, I don't know. We'll see. one of us can sleep well it's uh, a little after one in the morning and we're waiting on our discharge papers uh, they've taken his stitches out I don't know if I've already said that or not um, I'm delirious. <laughs> and he's had his antibiotic and he's had fluids um, and so they're gonna be sending us home and giving us some more antibiotics because uh, he wants him to stay on antibiotics for about seven days oral antibiotics so Anyway, so uh, I feel like the whole episode was my body's response to rapid infection. It's just crazy how quickly. I mean, the wound was not red today. Mm -hmm. The leg was not red today, and and just within a couple of hours, it was red. You know, two, three, four inches away from the wound. Yeah. And, so and hot. Yeah. So that infection progressed pretty quick pretty today. Pretty quick. What? You know, I mean, a, a hog tusk is... Kind of dirty, they huh? Don't, they don't use toothpaste, so... <laughs> well, we're on our way home, and we're stopping to get us... Uh, I wish I could say midnight snack, but it's a 2.13 a.m. snack. Okay, so we're back at the surgery clinic today because they told us at the hospital last night that... Um, we needed to clean it. I needed to clean it good with soap and water and stuff. And after have cleaning mama's bed sore and stuff and knowing how I had to do that and pack it and all that kind of stuff. And Tommy's got a deep wound and they really didn't look in it last night to really know how deep it was. I thought I better call the surgery clinic and talk to them and see what they said. And so they said, no, it would be better if we uh, kind of packed it and stuff. And so... <laughs> I would rather stick my tongue in a light socket than be here right now. But anyway, so uh, I, I just would rather them show me again how to do that. So we're here and they're going to pack it and show me how to do that. And um, hopefully it'll help it to go ahead and start healing. Tommy's pain has been some better today than it was last night well, when it was so bad. You know? Clarify that. It's better. Like right now I'm not hurting but the pain that results from any movement or any contact is no better. It's just that it, it had gotten where I had bad pain just 
Yeah, constantly. Constant bad pain. And so. that's better, thankfully. And I'm thankful. I don't want to sound ungrateful. Yeah. But it's still excruciating pain with contact or movement. Yeah, so anyway, and no, it's going to hurt to have to pack it and that kind of stuff. But <sighs> But that will help it to start healing. So anyway, that's where we're at. All right, we're back at the surgeon's office. Today is Friday. Uh, so we're just here for a recheck for them to check on it and see how his wound is doing. And Tommy thinks we're, he's doing better. Yeah, it's, uh, it's slow progress, but I'll take slow progress over regress any day. Well, here we are. It's Monday morning. Uh, and from the surgery clinic on Friday, the doctor did think that Tommy was doing better. Um, and just said, call us if we need them. Call them if we need them. Sorry, we, I haven't had a lot of sleep this weekend because we have a call in to them because, why, Tommy? Fever has returned. Yeah, his pain hadn't necessarily gotten worse, but um, he's had fever Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, and he's on a lot of medicine and he keeps having fever. So we're waiting on the surgery clinic to call us back. Well, we went for the visit at the surgery clinic. We saw the nurse practitioner again, and uh, he had talked with the surgeon, knowing that uh, Tommy was having the fever and all. And they have, oh, before we left to go, right when we was leaving to go, Tommy was changing his T-shirt and he had a rash all over his back, all the way down to his thighs on his backside. And so uh, that's probably a reaction to the Bactrim that he was on. He's on he was on Bactrim and clindamycin. And so the new game plan is uh, I'll keep packing the wound like I'm doing. And they're changing the Bactrim to Cipro, which he's already taken one dose of that. And uh, they, he, they're trying to schedule us, schedule him to get IV antibiotics. Uh, it'll just be a one-time dose of the IV antibiotics, but it's supposed to last two weeks. I don't remember the name of that. I'd never heard of it. It started with a D. But um, so the Cipro, I think, is gram-positive for gram-positive bacteria, and the IV will be gram-negative or vice versa. I don't really understand about all that stuff. But anyway, each one treats different bacteria. He uh, thinks he's got a pocket of infection that's below the wound, and that's what's causing the fever or for, and for Tommy to feel bad. He felt really bad this evening. Um, his fever only came up to a little over 99. Um, he's actually sleeping in bed tonight. Uh, this will be the first night since he got injured that he's sleeping in bed. So it's been, it was a week ago, Sunday, and today is Monday. So seven, eight days sleeping in the recliner. He was ready to get in bed. So hopefully his fever doesn't come up tonight and hopefully he'll be able to get that IV antibiotic tomorrow. So I'm hoping this will be a good game plan. Uh, I really wanted them to do an MRI. He didn't think that was necessary. I'm a little concerned that maybe he has an infection in the bone. Um, though he doesn't have the typical symptoms of that, uh, which would have be a lot of pain. Uh, so he did have a little more pain in his wound after we came home today, but that's probably because uh, the nurse practitioner really squeezed on it a lot, like to see if he could make pus come out or something, but it didn't. Anyway, so tomorrow is a new day. This has been a long journey, and honestly, I'm ready for this video to be over because that'll be mean that we're on an up swing getting better. Well, Tuesday, Tommy was able to get the IV antibiotic. He's been continuing to improve, except the Cipro now has caused severe indigestion. And so he is on Pepsit now for that. Uh, he seems to be getting better otherwise, but boy, that, that indigestion has just been debilitating. Um, today is Thursday morning, and he slept in the bed again, and of course, he sleeps on his stomach, on his back, and everything. And that rash that I told you about now is covering his body. Um, he hadn't been taking Benadryl. We just hadn't thought about it. It's not bothering him, and it was just on his back, so he didn't see it. But 
he can't take Benadryl today because he is actually going to go to work. So uh, he's going to start taking Benadryl every night to see if the rash don't get better. So it's a good sign that he is improving except for the indigestion and the rash. Well, back at the surgeon's office for a three week checkup. Yesterday was three weeks since the injury. And um, I feel better today than I felt in a while mentally. And uh, so I, uh, it is improving. Well, the uh, surgeon was pleased with the progress of the wound. He cleaned it out. Um, I didn't, I didn't video that. He probably didn't want me to. I actually saw a different surgeon. I actually saw a surgeon this time. I've been seeing the nurse practitioner, but he, he cut away some of the dead stuff. And, uh, so the, the wound looks a lot cleaner now. And he wants me to see me again in another couple of weeks, which is actually going to have to be three weeks because my schedule won't allow me to come back in two weeks. So anyway, progress. Well, we thought that was going to be the final leg of the journey, but <laughs> since then, uh, you know, when I went back to work and the um, <laughs> sat at a table all day long with my foot hanging down and the sucker swelled up like a balloon, uh, not really swelling as much as holding fluid bad, and so which is swelling. Yeah, I guess, and so. <laughs> Uh, I, we called the doctor and the doctor said, you really need to go back and see the surgeon. So I did. And he examined it, said, everything's fine. And he said the the least encouraging thing he said was, Tommy, you got to realize this was a significant trauma to your leg and your leg ain't going to be normal for months. Yeah. And, and so, and the hole was only ever that big y'all, but it, it bruised my bone and it was significant trauma. I, I thought the pig had broken my leg. It took me 30 seconds to realize my leg wasn't broken. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you've been wondering where we were. I've been mostly at a surgeon's office, <laughs> it seems like. but Yeah, and, and I don't think I said on the video, I don't remember if I did or not. We had had that the old sinus viral crud going on. For three weeks for leading three up weeks to that. Before that. So it's like, and this has been a ride, y'all. But you know what? Praise God. We're okay, and Tommy's gonna be okay. It's just taking a while to yeah. get completely over it. So now, okay. now I'm having to wear pantyhose. <laughs> he has a stocking. Not really pantyhose, but I do have a compression stocking on my right leg that, that yeah. seems to be helping. And you know, the good news is, I mean, God is good because one of the first things my pastor said was, he said, Tommy, you do realize if this was 100 years ago, you'd be dead. <laughs> and, yeah. 